Hello everybody, my name is Zeke, welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be a reading vlog and more than that, hopefully it will be the first in me trying to be a little more consistent uh, with making reading vlogs. In the past, I've kind of treated reading vlogs as something I do maybe once a month and don't really think too much about, but I think that they are pretty easy videos to make and also can be very fun to make for me because I get to talk about what I'm reading while I'm reading it and also I get to share my thoughts both before, during, and after, which is an interesting experience that you don't really get with other types of videos. So I'm going to try to move to a more consistent schedule uh, with making reading vlogs and I don't know exactly how well that's going to work because I'm very busy and who knows if the time I want to have to be able to do this will actually end up happening. But my goal is to try to start doing them either weekly or once every two weeks. I'm going to start out trying to do weekly, but if that is too much, I'm not going to push it and I'll just do every two weeks and I'm going to not count those as like a weekly video. I'm going to do another video on top of that if I can usually and I'm going to try to do it for this month and see how that goes. If it proves to be too much, I'll switch over in October and forget about it, but it's just something I want to try, and I think that the main thing that's going to be very helpful for me with this is actually planning out what I'm going to read during a week. I don't like doing monthly TBRs really because I feel like Personally, I don't know what I want to read in advance usually. I personally do not have a huge backlog of physical books that I just reach into and pick out and decide to read. I really only go to the bookstore every once in a while and pick out books and then basically read those books immediately. And all the other books I get are either physically from the library or digitally from the library. So I very much am reading in the present. I don't really think ahead but I can kind of plan for a week, I think. That's not too difficult. And so for this week, I am currently in the middle of the story of The Lost Child by Elena Ferrante. And so my goal is going to be finishing this book and then moving on. And I have two books out from the digital library right now, but I'm gonna focus on the shorter one because this is pretty long and is taking me a while to get through. And the other book I'm going to read is Galatea by Madeline Miller, which is really, really short and is, I think, basically a novella or short story. And that should be really interesting and uh, something smaller that I can definitely finish within a week. And then if I still have time, I'll think about that then. But for now, that's kind of the plan. And I guess I will start by talking a little about the story of the lost child. So this book is the fourth in a series uh, called the Neapolitan novels that I've been reading throughout this year. I read the first one early on in the year and then liked it enough, but wasn't really driven to immediately pick up the rest of the series. And so I gave it a long time and I didn't pick up the second book until August. Uh, but once I picked up the second book, I ended up really, really loving it and kind of since then I've been moving through the series really quickly. But now, unfortunately, uh, summer's over back at school and I don't have as much time. So this is like a 500 page book and is taking me a little longer to get through, but that's okay because I want to savor it because I'm really enjoying it and it is the last book. But I'm currently 270 pages in. And uh, if you don't know, this series, it follows these two characters who uh, our best friends since childhood, Elena and Lilla, and we watch them grow up throughout the books. And what I have really liked about it is that literary fiction often, it's usually just one book, or at least the literary fiction that I read is not usually part of a series. So getting to read such a long and expansive series about these characters, you really get a lot of depth that you can't get with just one book. And you get the sort of plot that really just builds and we reference things throughout from the first book and so I've just loved everything I've read um, so far and this book is going great so far. Specifically with this book I feel like we've 
at the point I'm in, we've really narrowed back into the roots of what made the first book uh, so good and the first and second book so interesting. First and second really focus on the relationship between these two girls. The third one, it still obviously it touches on this relationship, but we get a little more expansive and I feel like in this fourth book, we've narrowed back in and I'm just really enjoying having that narrowed back in experience bringing with it everything that happened in the third book and it all kind of converging in this uh, conclusion that I think is going very well. So far, all the characters are have changed a lot over the course of four books and I'm just looking forward to seeing how it concludes. So I'm going to read a little more and get back to you on that. Um, but I have a lot of thoughts and I'm sure that as we get closer to the end, I'm only going to have more things to say and I'll probably be very emotional by the end of this because I can't imagine that um, everything for the rest of the book will go super smoothly because they never do in these books. Okay, I've read another section of the book and I think this past passage really epitomizes what I love so much about the series. I want to say I've read like a hundred pages and in those hundred pages the amount of ups and downs and the complexity of the different relationships between characters and the situation that they're put into is just so engaging and so unique and it just goes by at such a breakneck pace that is just unexpected honestly and the author will just go into these tan these small tangents to explain something horrifying that has just happened in the book and she does it in a way that I think really just keeps you engaged and really keeps you wanting to know how everything's going to turn out. Obviously, that's what you're kind of looking for in, in any book. But I feel like the way that she transitions between these ups and downs that happen so rapidly in the characters' lives is just done in such an incredible way. And it could, it could go so poorly because obviously, if there's all this tonal dissonance, like you don't want to read that and that's that can be very distracting but it just feels so natural in this book and it really feels like you're reading this life that makes sense and that could happen and everything that happens in this book feels very reasonable without losing that feel of being a story and without making it boring and I just think that's such a talent and because there's all this history built up with the characters along four books and because you're so connected to them seeing these ups and downs and seeing how quickly their fortunes change back and forth um, really works very well because of your attachment to them and i'm just really still enjoying the experience i don't think anything's going to change so i guess i'll just update when i finish the book i have like a little more than 100 pages left and it's going well and I'll share some more broad opinions about the book when I finish it. I just think that that passage specifically was such a good example of what makes the series so great. So I wanted to weigh in on that, um, but I will update when I finish. Okay, I finished the book and very happy with how it ended. I am gonna give it five stars because I just think, I don't really have a lot to say about anything else that happened really. I think it really just continued everything that I loved about it and it's obviously hard to talk about because it's the last book in a series and I'm not gonna talk about the plot but I just want to say real quick about the ending. Um, it was bittersweet and I don't think it was wholly satisfying but I think that really fits the rest of the series and the book and what we see throughout the characters. Their lives are not easy. Um, they're not always best of friends, things don't always go uh, the happy route. And I think the ending and this last book really shows that and we get even more deep into their individual psyches than we do in the previous three books. So I'm just really happy with how everything wrapped up. And I think that this book really just took all the best parts of the series and focused in on them and made sure to wrap it up in a really good way. Um, and I'm very happy with it. So that's it for this book. And I'm gonna go and start reading Galatea soon and update once I'm a little into that. And I probably won't update a lot with that because it's a short story, um, but very, very happy with this. 
Okay, I actually just read all of Galatea because I didn't realize it was only 20 pages. It really is a short story. Um, I thought it was more novella. I thought it was going to be like at least like 100-ish pages, but that's okay. I still really enjoyed it. I don't think I have a ton to say, but it was very good for what it was. Um, it's a mythological retelling, as I said, about the story of Galatea and Pygmalion, where um, Galatea is this statue created by Pygmalion, and she comes to life in the myth. Um, but this story takes that and shows a story of abuse. Um, as you can imagine, he created this statue for his own use. He doesn't view her as human, and he kind of locks her away um, in some sort of facility. And it's just very much centered on how this story is abusive and that idea of him um, using her for his own pleasure and his own happiness um, without thinking that she's really human. And I thought this is a really good way to retell a myth and I really liked this as a mythological retelling because it takes a classic story and it has commentary on it. And I think that's a very much more interesting way to tell to retell a story is when you actually have something to say about it and I think this did that really well and I'm glad I read it. I don't know if I'm gonna rate it just because it was so short. I'll have to think about that but it was very good. I wasn't originally planning on doing this but to round out the week because Galatea was so short I'm gonna go on and read another book. Um, not read a full book, I'm gonna start a book and see how far I get before the week is kind of over. Um, but I've decided to read If We Were Villains by ML Rio. Uh, and this this pick has a bit of a story behind it. I put it on hold from the library in like May or June, planning to read it sometime in the summer, and it was on hold for many, many weeks, and it just got off hold. And I was just able to take it out, luckily, which honestly I'm happy about now because this book, I don't know a lot about it, but what I do know is it's a dark academia book, and that is not a summer book, and I was gonna read it in summer, but I feel like now that I can pretend that it's not summer, even though it's still the same temperature, it is September, which to me means it's fall, um, even if that's not really true, I can feel better about reading this book in the right time, in the right atmosphere, and hopefully that will add to my enjoyment of it and probably should wait till winter at this point if that's my goal, but honestly at this point, I'm never gonna be able to get this book from the library ever again is my main fear. And so I'm gonna just start reading it now while I have access to it and hopefully it goes well. And I've been wanting to read this for a very long time. So we'll see how it goes. And I will check in once I have something to tell you about the book, maybe what it's about. Um, and I'm excited. I've now read enough where I can talk a little about what the book's actually about. So we are kind of introduced to this character who's in jail or locked up in some sort of way and the framing of the book is that he's explaining what happened to this other guy who comes in and is kind of curious about what's going on so the book is basically so far a long extended flashback but it's just what the book is of what happened all these years ago at this prestigious four-year art school um, we're following this cohort of like seven uh, fourth years, so last year in the school, who are all in the theater department and they do Shakespeare. And so th it's a little bit pretentious, but they're all very close to each other. And they all are very obviously into theater and Shakespeare. And they talk to each other with like Shakespeare quotes and they are auditioning for these shows. And there's some other stuff just going on around the school. And so far I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying this kind of relationship we're getting to see between the seven main characters as well as the atmosphere and um, the overall just tone of the book. It feels like something, some things are like a little off and obviously because of the framing, we know that something went wrong and we're kind of just working up to it. And I just think it's really doing everything I wanted it to do so far, um, but I'm gonna stop the vlog for now. It's the end of the week. I'll continue with this book obviously in the week to come and you'll have to watch that in order to hear my 
thoughts on the rest of the book. But I think this was a pretty successful week. I was very happy with the end of the Neapolitan novels of uh, the story of the lost child. I was also uh, very happy with Galate, even though it was short, I did enjoy reading it. And this new book, If We Were Villains, looks like it's going to be pretty good. And obviously I don't really know a lot about what's going on yet because I just started it. So far it has captured my interest. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, or subscribe if you want. I try to post videos once a week. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, but I will see you in the next one.